All right, this is my straight out of the box build, the 51 Chevy Bel Air by AMT. I picked this kit up on Amazon, it wasn't very expensive. Um, but uh, I don't do any aftermarket or anything like that. Everything's gonna be right out of the box. Uh, the only altercations I'll do, I'll do myself. Um, I went ahead and painted and primed the uh, body, body and as you can see here I, I put some dents into it for the technique i saw on youtube um i don't think i did great on it but when it's done i think it'll look okay of course the thickness of the plastic is not quite to scale if it was like a real car so it's hard to get these things to actually look accurate but i did what i could with it um i've already started putting a lot of it together um some of it was easy some of it was hard, and the instructions are not great. Um, they need uh, some uh, work, as far as I can tell. The um, a lot of it is like upside down, which I had trouble with. You know, like here, it says shown upside down. I'm not really a car guy, so um, the only reason I'm really building this is so that I can get good enough at building cars so that I can build that. And I want to do it all weathered down and looking like uh, Christine when you first see her in the movie. Um, not the pristine version, you know, that pretty much everybody else does. I want to have a version of it that is uh, um, run down and before she became, you know, pristine again. So I'm trying to figure out how to do that by uh, starting with these other uh, uh, car models. So. I don't know when this kit was originally released. It's probably a re-release, uh, as most of these kits tend to be. Um, it goes together okay. Uh, I've got this all together here on the front. Uh, I don't see any engine mounts, which is having a, I'm having a hard time figuring this out. I'm building it stock. I'm not interested in a drag racing version of it. I want to, I want to build a stock engine and, and go from there. I do not like this engine, as you can see there, the pulley system is cut off on the bottom. Uh, I guess that's so how you, how you mount it. Um, but I don't see a clear way to actually mount it into the kit the way that it's uh, set up right now. And uh, when I look at the instructions, it's just not really very clear how that goes in there. So, you know, when I'm starting to, starting to test fit stuff and, and see how it's gonna go in there, um, it doesn't, that doesn't make sense. It doesn't, it doesn't look accurate. I understand that these little uh, kits, these 125th scale engines are not going to be 100% accurate, but, you know, I think it needs to be better than that. Um, so, very disappointed in that. Uh, had to put the chassis part together, and that's going to go on here somewhere. Um, I usually take about two or three days to put a kit like this together. Uh, I'm not going to spend months looking for parts or researching and stuff like that because after a while, it just becomes no fun when you start getting that obsessed with it. So um, I should have this thing done in a couple of days, and it should look at least presentable. Um, it's not going to win any contests. I would never enter it in one of those uh, modeling contests, um, which uh, don't look like they're any fun anyways. But uh, as you can see, I'm a very sloppy builder. I'm just doing this on my kitchen table on a little board and uh, with things I have around the house, a pair of scissors, you know, you know, some, some, some sand, sanding files uh, and things like that. It's a couple things I don't like. Uh, here's some, these are uh, breathers or air filters or something for the front of the, inside the car and they're hollow on the bottom. I understand that that won't be visible, but it's, it's lazy and it makes it hard to, you know, you know, if I want to try to fix that, it's going to be a problem. So I'll leave it as it is, but a little disappointed in that. Um, I'm going to go with the, um, as much as possible, um, just the uh, unchrome parts for the wheels and stuff because I want it to look really weathered down. I don't want it to look really shiny. And sometimes it's hard to make uh, chrome parts look really shiny. And uh, I haven't even opened those yet. You can build this model kit stock or or like a race car or a dragster or something, but I'm just doing stock. And of course I'll have to use some of the uh, chrome parts, but my goal is to make it look like uh, 
kind of a barn find. So that a, a car you might find that's kind of kept up well enough in a um, barn someplace. It's going to be weathered uh, with chip paint and all that stuff. And uh, I kind of like these old motors. Um, you could really work on those things. I mean, you could get in there and change out the parts yourself. Whereas if you try to work on a car now, it's just a big pain. Whereas before, you could actually learn how to do some things just because uh, all the parts are really accessible. Unlike today, where everything's just so smashed in there, it's just hard to do anything. Uh, to change out one thing, you have to take out five others. So, so we'll see how it goes, and uh, I'll update you as I go along with this. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do now is, I've got the base paint on here and primer. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of weather this. Uh, with the base coating that I'm going to start with and then I'm going to do another technique after this but I'm going to start right now with this I'm going to take these uh, uh, Model Master uh, acrylics that I like a lot and I'm going to open them up and I'm going to kind of start uh, slow on because I'm painting my finger already I'm going to start trying to uh, put this together and uh, make this work. I got this little piece of sponge here that I like to use and uh, kind of dab it in there and you start doing one of these numbers with it. I like the acrylics, they work fine. Uh, I like them a lot better than the enamels that I used when I was a kid that um, I found just never really looked very good. You'll find uh, old model kits, especially the old Aurora kits where people use that tester's model paint on them in the 60s and they're just almost ruined um, because they're so thick. So uh, when this dries, it'll, it'll give a kind of a look that it's kind of a, uh, here's my, here's the motor. It's just getting there. Um, it's getting, uh, it, it'll dry pretty nice and it'll be not too thick and it'll look pretty good and then once I uh, do the other weathering techniques on it, it'll look good. I might put in some of this tan to go with it um, to kind of give it a, you know, kind of a two-tone kind of look. So uh, that's what I'm gonna do with this right now and, I'll, and um, I'll do a little time lapse on it. So yeah, so enjoy that. All right, so I just finished putting the, you know, kind of a rusty looking base coat on there. Um, that will dry and dries kind of flat. And then uh, there's another process uh, to do after this. And there's the hood. Uh, and I put some dents in it like I talked about earlier. I went ahead and did the uh, rear axle thing there um, for later um, since, I had, since I had the paint out. So. Uh, we'll see what happens with this when it dries and then uh, we'll go from there so um you real i really can't tell if it if this base is going to work until i get through the next step and then once i get through the next step i'll know if it worked so let's find out together so the paint is dried and um over top of the primer and it's pretty good it's kind of like rust. That's kind of the goal that I'm going for. And I'm going to use the uh, salt technique that I saw on YouTube uh, to uh, do this uh, effect. Um, I hope it works out. It worked out. I tried it once before and it worked out pretty good on another kit. But uh, let's see what it does for the Bel Air. And uh, I'll start putting some of the salt on there. And you can kind of see that. I just use the Mortons. There's all kinds of different salt. Some people use a lot of different uh, grains, big, you know, big salt, smaller salt. I just use this. This is what I have, and I'm going to make this work. Um, I don't like to buy a lot of extra stuff, so anytime I, I, if I can use something I already have, I'm trying to go for that, and I'm just going to use the old-fashioned Morton. So let's see what we can do with this. 
it's a very basic technique. You basically just take uh, your kit, and I'll start with the hood here. We'll start with the hood, and uh, got a brush here somewhere, right here. And you're going to put some water, and you're going to you're going to try to put little salt grains where you're going to want this, you know, kind of kind of effect. And the salt will kind of help you create these little areas of, um, you know, when you paint it, it'll create these little areas. And the salt will kind of create an area of rust. Yeah, you know, it's pretty good. And you more salt, you know, will keep more area open. And uh what do you like? So so we'll see what we can do here. Uh some people use spray bottles. Uh I'm, I I seem to do better with just the brush. Just brush the water where you want it. Um, these are techniques that you can learn on your own. You, you, you can try them and find your own ways. So I, I wouldn't ever tell you to do what I've done. You should just do, you know, building a model like art. And you should let it take you where it takes you. So uh, don't feel like you should feel obligated to, to do what other people do. And I, when I see the attention to detail that some people do... Uh, I'm not sure if it's good or bad, really. Um, you know, do your own thing. Because you really only have to make yourself happy. I know a lot of the contests and stuff, you're trying to please a judge. And I think you, you kind of, you kind of, uh, I think you kind of limit yourself when you do that, myself. You, uh, you're trying so hard to please what you think the judge wants that you... You don't do what you want, so, um, so, I just do it the way that I want it, and I think that hood looks kind of interesting, the way that it is, so now when I spray it, it should make some pretty interesting, um, leave some interesting marks on it, so, you know, I don't know if this is going to work yet, I might spray it, and it might look horrible, and... I may abandon this model kit because it looks so bad. But for now, I think it looks kind of okay. Let's do the main body part. Um, I'm not going to make you watch me do the en entire thing here. But uh, I'm going to basically do the same thing that you kind of saw that I did with the hood. I'm going to find some... Put some water where I want the salt to go. and uh, see what we can kind of make happen here. So you gotta let the salt dry for a long time, so I'll let this probably dry overnight before I spray it with the uh, final um, paint. Now the paint I'm gonna use is this right here. Uh, I have no idea what this is going to do. Uh, we'll see. Might eat, the, might, might eat the plastic right up. I don't know. Um, but uh, that's what I got. And uh, I want to see what it's going to do. I'm kind of excited about it, actually. I don't know what, what it means. It might uh, be the worst thing I've ever done. But uh, don't know until you try. And that's kind of part of the fun of it. So I put the water on there. And uh, let's see, sprinkle some salt on there. Let it dry on. Let's see what we can uh, make happen with this.
So I'm going to continue with this process for a while, and then I'll show you what it looks like when I'm all finished. So there it is with the uh, salt on it. I have to let that dry, and then I'm going to spray it with this uh, metallic finished Rust-Oleum bright coat. I do not know what that's going to look like. I know uh, the master model builders, of course, use uh, airbrushes, and uh, I don't have any of that. I uh, don't want to take that much tr time or trouble. I'm um, just not at that level, and I don't really have that interest at that level. So I'm going to use the old-fashioned spray paint. Um, we'll see what it comes out as. And it's going to take a few hours for this to dry before I can do that, and then I'll show you what it looks like after I spray it with this Rust-Oleum, which probably isn't good for this kind of plastic, but uh, that's what I'm using it for, and uh, we'll see what happens. It says it'll work. Hope it does. So there it is. It's painted now. Yeah, you can see the salt is on there. And I'm going to let that dry for a while, uh, probably overnight, at least overnight. And then uh, tomorrow I will go through the process of getting that off and uh, seeing what the effect comes out as. And uh, I hope it's going to be kind of interesting. Uh, I think it will be. Kind of happy with that gold. It won't be that shiny once it's all finished and the other weathering techniques happen and of course dull coat and things like that it will uh, look a little different but uh, and that's what I'm working with and uh, I feel pretty positive about it at this point. All right so now we're ready to start the process of taking the salt off of the uh, kit itself with some uh, warm water and uh, a toothbrush. Uh, sometimes I like to use soap depending on how it goes. This is only the second time I've ever done this, so we'll see what happens. So let's turn some warm, warm water on it, on it and see what we can get to come off. I try the best I can to keep the paint chip from getting into the um, um, drain. So I'll try to collect as much as I can in this bowl. But you can see already, it's already kind of coming off, so it's kind of giving you a, giving the, uh, giving the, uh, what it's going to kind of look like when it's done. So, you know, you can scrub it off. You know, this is coming off great. This is really coming off good. I'm, I'm already liking what I'm seeing. So, uh, so I'm going to put that in there. I'm just going to kind of let that kind of soak in there so um but you can you can see it, it gives a really nice um effect that you know it's it's rust you know that's been time and weathering and you know the elements and you know mainly time is taking its toll and uh this this salt is coming off great i'm pretty happy with that so i'm going to finish this with a little time lapse uh, so you don't see the whole process. So uh, let's go a little time lapse and we'll see what happens. So now it's all uh, done, and uh, I'll give it a little dry off here, see what it looks like. And uh, um, I'm going to do more weathering with it, uh, with uh, some pastels and things like that, but for the most part, it came out pretty well. Um, really gives it that natural time beat down look and that was kind of the goal i'm going for uh on this um very happy with it very happy with the way that it came out and we'll see what happens next uh, very happy indeed uh, 
here's just a quick look at the motor. Um, I didn't do anything special with it. I just kind of weathered it. Um, it would be pretty easy to do the uh, distributor cap uh, cables and all that, but I don't think I'm going to do it. Um, it's only got six cylinders are all there on that, that side there. It would be pretty easy to do, um, but uh, I'm not sure I'm going to do it. But here it is. Uh, you know, just a quick look at it. I'm um, pretty happy with it. Uh, like I said, I want it to look like it's a garage find, and um, I think it pretty much captures that. Well, there it is finished, the final build. Um, had some problems with the uh, engine and the front end. The front end is not right. Um, that bumper is not in the right position. I don't know if it was me or if it was the kit or what, but I had a very difficult time with uh, getting the motor mounted right and those little air things that are, are in there, those didn't quite uh, go in very easily and it took me a very long time and way too much time um, and the front bumper isn't right and the front wheel alignment isn't proper um, so I'm not completely happy with it I think the paint job came out okay I think about 75% of the build was okay but I think it just fell apart there uh, once I got the chassis in and once I got started putting the body on it just didn't fit right and I don't know if it was me I don't know if it was the kit but um, it wasn't as good as I'd hoped. It looks okay, but uh, I will always know it's not right. As you can see, the, the um, hood doesn't sit on there flush the way it's supposed to do. It's too low, um, so something's not right. Um, it is what it is. I don't want to go back into it. I've, I've put a little bit more time into it than I'd hoped. And, of course, this was just a, pre, you know, a precursor to me doing Christine. Um, another AMT kit. I'm not sure if I'm ready for it yet. Um, the weathering came out good overall, and I think that will look good for Christine, but uh, I need to do a much better job on the final construction than this. It's going to bug me. You know, Every time I look at it, I'm not going to see the model kit. All I'm going to see is this, that this part is wrong. There's little gaps in there. I tried everything to smash it down to make it fit, and moved it all and then you know moved it here and moved it there but then the wheels were all completely out of alignment so i don't know if it's me i don't know if it's the kit um i looked online and the ones i saw online that people did it came out a little bit better than mine um but it's okay it's right out of the box uh the biggest complaint are these instructions uh part of the you know the build is actually upside down i can't really tell much from that i really needed to see how things were supposed to fit together you know that when you know over the top um, how that's supposed to be and all that and, and it just uh, was a uh, just just uh, disappointing that uh, it just didn't it just didn't go together the way that I hoped so um, there it is it's finished um, hope you enjoyed this video um, I'm sure if you built this kit you'd probably do a little bit better job than I did but um, it's a cool looking car that's for sure and uh, it makes it look a lot cooler if it looks like it's a barn find and uh, not you know, spanking new. This is much more interesting to me than anything else. But I really want to do Christine, and that's what I'm working on next. So I mean, maybe I'll do another car kit first before I do Christine, because I really want to uh, do this model kit justice, and uh, I want it to look uh, weathered and the beat up version of Christine. So um, I want it to be right, and definitely want to make sure all the parts go together perfectly. So. Uh, I did a pretty good job on the bottom. If you can see that, look at that. It came out pretty good. Um, the, there's no motor mounts. You know, the, mount, the motor's not mounted. There's no motor mounts in there. It's just kind of sitting in there. So that's disappointing. Um, there were some problems with the kit. There really were. So anyways, look at that front end. It's not right.
piece of shit.